Hello, Mrs. Talk Techie here, and uh, I have a super exciting thing that I'm working on. I don't know if it's like the nerd in me, uh, or the teacher in me, or the OCD in me, all of those things that I'm really enjoying this, and I finally feel like things are starting to fall into place as far as my virtual teaching. I am in week two of remote learning. We had our district had a little bit of a late start, but I think it worked out for the best. And uh, I want to show you something that I've been thinking about what's the best way to help organize my Google Classroom when it comes to sharing my recorded sessions with my kiddos. And so that was an, that is an expectation of my district for us to record our sessions and to make them available to our kids. And so what I decided to do is to put it in a Google Slides calendar presentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to Google Classroom so that you can see uh, how it looks, how I attached it, and how the kids are going to access it. So through that student's lens. So this is my Google Classroom. I have a today activity which our kids are using Flipgrid to record themselves singing the Seven Continents song that we learned in class during our live session. This activity is done during asynchronous time. This week, these are activities that have been completed or are coming up. So they had a seesaw summary. They also had a world geography picture that they had to upload as well. So notice that the kids know that what the activities are based on these emojis that are being placed here. I actually got this idea from Holly Clark, who I have on several different social media platforms. And when I saw that, I was like, yes, perfect. So the kids know that emojis all mean something. At first, it might take them a bit to get used to it. I do have it under our 411 here, um, right here, emojis in Google Classroom. What do they mean? We do have it there, but the more they see it, the more they'll get used to it, and they, they'll know they'll have an expectation of, oh, Seesaw, I actually have to submit this in Seesaw, right? So when they see that little asterisk. A picture. Oh, I actually have to take a picture. That's going to be my submission of my work. That's how it goes. And it's been working really well. The kids know that's the expectation. I'll talk about it a little bit more once we get into the actual resource that I'm going to be providing. And of course, a master copy of the interactive notebook that we're going to be compiling in class as well as our class meet recordings. This is what the kids are going to see. What I started doing is I started putting the meets, the links, and I realized, man, these are going to be super long. Like I'm going to have a lot if I'm doing this every single day for 36 weeks. That's going to be a lot of links for them to kind of sift through. But I wanted them to be compiled all in one general area. And so this is what I decided to do. Once the kids click here, they're going to get this Google slide presentation on present mode. So I'm going to take you over there. So this is how the kiddos are going to see it. Now, this slides presentation, this template, I actually got from SlidesGo, which has so many different uh, free templates for you from digital notebooks to digital planners to just fun and exciting, uh, playful slides templates that all you have to do is click and add it to your slides or download as a PowerPoint and you can start customizing them. And that's what I did here. I kind of customized this so that it meets my instructional needs during remote learning. So here you have the months and the kids can click through them or they can click using the arrow and go through it. Notice I have the emoji cheat sheet as well. And uh, there, it's just a little legend, a little key as to what each emoji means. It doesn't mean I'm using all of these. So continuing with that, we can click through it and say September, and it takes them to September. And so our first day of, school, of remote learning was September 8th. So there you have it. I didn't record the sessions because, you know, we were starting off. I didn't actually start recording until the 16th of September. But I did put what the objectives were for that day just so that they know. If you notice at the bottom, I do have a key or a legend. And I did that so that it's quick and easy access. These are my go-to assignments that they're going to be using for our learning management system, which is Google Classroom. And so notice here, what I did is this is actually the Google Meets session, the link that's recorded. What I also did is I put the emoji 
of the assignment that we had that day if there was an assignment. So it helps them out because not only do they get to see their lesson, they also get to see what kind of activity was due that day. So if they have that asterisk, they know it's a seesaw submission or a flip grid or they're taking a picture. Now, you could level it up and link those emojis to your actual Google Classroom assignments. Now, I recommend this if you only have one class that you teach because that'll make it easy to link your Google Classroom assignments. However, if you teach multiple classes, then you're going to have to make multiple planners, multiple calendars, because each Google Classroom, your periods, your class periods, those links are different. You can't put the link for second period because then your third period kiddos won't be able to access that assignment. So for me, I just really like the idea of them having a visual and knowing, hey, you know, Thursday, September 17th, there's two things that were due and I missed that day. So I need to make sure that I look into what the assignments were. So really, that's the idea of this resource. And maybe I might have hyped it up too much, but I just love the idea of creating a central hub where they can click through and have access to all their lessons for the year. I mean, that's just amazing. Think about what we're creating because of remote learning, something that we might have not ever been able to create or have or do otherwise. Um, but with that said, I want to show you right now how you go about getting that link, creating it like this, and then adding it to your Google Classroom. Additionally, I do want to let you know that there is the full year. So if you go, there's October, there's November, and I've already gone ahead and customized the days so that they match with the month and the year. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and now take you to my drive so that you can see how I gather that link and some of those sharing specifications that you need to make sure that you toggle on. So in Google Classroom, once you start recording, it makes a folder for you. And I made subfolders so that I can start organizing my stuff. But this is the idea. You get the actual video. You also get a transcript of your video. So everything that was said and put in that chat, you'll get a copy of that as well. So what you want to do is you right click your recording, get link, and then you're going to change the settings. So here you might have different settings depending on your school district and the restrictions that they have. So you can put anyone with the link or you might be able to change it so, so that only kids within your school domain can access it. It just depends on you and how you want to organize that. So let's say I just want from my district, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then you just copy the link. So now the link is copied to my clipboard. I'm gonna go to my presentation and what you will do is you will click after the number, enter, and you're gonna start typing what you what that lesson was about that day. So, so let's say we talked about exploration. And so now that you have that, you're going to highlight your text and you're gonna click on Control K or you can click on the link up here. And because your link is copied to your clipboard, it's waiting there for you to paste it. So control V or command V if you're on a Mac, will paste it there and then you just apply. And it's set and it's ready to go. That's how simple it is. The other thing is I like to click on the left side of the number and put the emojis. If you're wondering how to get that emoji keyboard on your Windows or your MacBook, I do have a video. It's super easy. You can find it in the description below. So check it out. So then you would just add your, your emoji right there. You can even, if let's say you use some of the ones that are here, you can copy those and paste them there as well. So it's that simple. Now that you've done that and your presentation is ready to go, you want to make sure that you also change the share settings in your presentation so that either everyone, notice I've attached them to my Google Classrooms already, so that everyone with the link can view it or so that just kids within your domain, it's, it's up to you. Make sure you do change that or else the kids are going to get that notice that they require access. All right, so now let's take you to Google Classroom. So this is one of my practice classrooms that I have. I actually have my own children here so that it helps me out. I'm able to log into their account and see the student view. So you would create a material and you would add your title to it. 
and then you would click on add from Google Drive. And if you just finish working on it, it's gonna populate under recent. So I'm gonna click on it right here and I'm gonna insert. And now I'm gonna to go to topic. And if you wanna create a topic, now is the time to create that topic. And you just type in meet recordings. And so then you attach it to all the classes you want it to be presented in. And once you're ready, you post it and it's ready to go guys. And there it is with my topic and my actual recording. And the kids are not going to have to be sifting through all those recordings. And it's not going to take that valuable real estate in your Google Classroom. So I hope you guys find it useful. This is the example of what you're going to be getting. My Bitmojis won't be on there just so that it saves you that little bit of time to click and delete. Uh, and so you can customize it and tailor it so that it fits your instructional needs as well. But that basically wraps it up. Don't forget to grab the copy in the description below. So if you do find value in this resource and in this video, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can get notified every time I upload new content. As well as feel free to add to the comments. If you're able to level it up and, and add a twist to it, let me know guys. I love hearing from you guys and I love getting that constructive feedback. All right. Have a good one and we'll see you guys next time.